One minute, 30 seconds, 15. Three, two. Good morning and welcome to Insiders, the morning after a crucial by-election in Melbourne. I believe that the government is well and truly back in the game. Observation or a prediction one at a time. One of the most convincing acts of lunacy I've seen in some time. People Possibly. mutually backstab each other to death. They're all being terribly noble and saying they don't believe they will be. Tearing up the old idea of, of uh, the brown rice and lentils party. Could mean that actually <laughs> well, sense has prevailed over, over party politics. Hoe into that swordfish and tell me what you think of it, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> Am I able to answer or don't oh, you, you want to well, Who could stop you? It all depends on the phases of the moon. Hugh Zackerman, don't be shy about this issue. <laughs> I'm Mike Bowers and I'm chief photographer for the Fairfax Group of Newspapers. I'm in Sydney with the Daily Telegraph's cartoonist Warren Brown. You saw John Howard and he was like a rabbit in the spotlight. There were times there when John Howard had, you know, when his eyebrows do this, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, in yeah. a cartooning way. You yeah, know, normally yeah. his eyebrows do this, when his eyebrows do this, he's going, <laughs> He wants a dignified changeover. For that to occur, he can't keep you waiting forever. Well, I, uh, I'm quite happy to be the treasurer. Uh, I've been the treasurer now for uh, five and a half years. Well, uh, if he's not discussing it with Peter Costello, he'd hardly discuss it with you, would he? Oh, you yes. never know. <laughs> <laughs> Don't panic. Did you Why actually... are they asking us not to panic? Didn't you see the later edition of this? The Peter Costello edition was panic. <laughs> <laughs> would you run to the speaker if Roman Bishop blew you a kiss across the chamber? <laughs> I think I would die. <laughs> the people you've really got to watch out for in this game are those who try to make a fetish of their innocence. Those poor kids at that playground going, Mummy, Mummy, who's that strange man <laughs> talking about fetishes? Is there a bit of Stockholm Syndrome? You begin to sort of feel like you're a captive and you start to like them? All I can tell you is, you know, who do you better trust to uh, keep the economy strong? <laughs> who do you better trust to keep interest rates low? How about the weapons of mass destruction? Are they under you or...? <laughs> <laughs> For me, it'll be health, education, the age and the environment. And I think Bob Brown's my man. OK, cheers. cheers. It's amazing you go home with after a couple of glasses of bubbly, isn't it? I think it's been a good year, um, except for the election. I want insiders <laughs> team ponchos for next year, Barry. I don't think the ABC budget will run to that. And that's all they're getting, a small step in the right direction? Well, cut it out. We've just made, uh, made a change. I mean, fair crack of the whip. We fired up the Barbie to have a look at some of the hot issues that happened this year, 2005. Oh, the script's gone. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> Oh, bloody hell. Insiders, Political Personality of the Year, 2005, Senator Barnaby Joyce. You must be very excited. It looks awfully like a poison chalice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the Prime Minister will invite me around for a, a cup of tea and a, and a good flogging. What I'm saying is this. You, you cannot call a relationship between a man and a man and a woman and a woman, or a man and a dog, or his cat or his goat, a oh, marriage. Oh, Piers. A Piers. marriage. And this is what... Piers, that's disgusting. Yeah. No, no. Piers, are you seriously David. calling... That is simply disgusting. Of a man and a not. goat. Whatever the sometimes manic activity in the parliament, this was the political image that carried the week. It's Craig Moore. Yeah! What a piece! We're talking pictures with Bill Leake, the cartoonist for The Australian. Now he won't get out of he bed for anything it. less than $10,000. How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself in that light? Australia's most disgraced senator, mate. <laughs> I did enjoy the Middle Eastern kiss of you. <laughs> <laughs> PM, you've seen off Turnbull there. You can now have the reshuffle. I think if you'd done it a couple of weeks ago, he might have got the votes on you. <laughs> mm. Les Patterson saying, give this man the gold bloody walkley. <laughs> you have public apologised, but, but I still have to ask the question, what were you thinking? I want to know what uh, Glenn's migraine medication was, and I won't be taking it, but also... <laughs> this constant talk of Kevin Rudd's popularity is starting to annoy senior ministers. I was enormously popular. I only hope that Mr Rudd suffers the same fate that I did, mm. instead of flouncing around like a celebrity. Feeling all apex? Oh, indeed, Mike, and I have to say, as the uh, Commander-in-Chief of the Australian Political and Editorial cartoonist cooperative otherwise known as a peck uh, It's been a wonderful week. It has to be said of that program that it is a very dedicated, serious federal political program. Kevin Rudd had too much to drink and uh, went to a strip club in, in New York. I guess my question to you, Glenn Milne, is uh, is the newspaper editor in trouble? At the outset, let me say, I've never been to a strip club. I did go to a tattoo parlour one night, you know, <laughs> after being on the tiles, but I didn't go through with it. <laughs> Barry, I'm here to answer your questions. So there's okay. two ways this interview can go. You can act like a jilted lover and we can do that for several minutes or you can ask me whatever political questions you've got. I accept full responsibility for the coalition's defeat. Ah oh, look, what's the point of going back over the last 12 months? We can't revive that. 
It's all over. Is the country ready for a Prime Minister called Kevin? Kevin would have done the market research and if his name was no good he would have changed it to Margaret. Do you think at some point you might have to take him aside and remind him of who's the boss? Well, look, Barry, we are so blessed to have someone like Malcolm Turnbull in our ranks. They don't know whether they're Arthur or Martha. Barry, that is absolute tr tripe. We've never seen anything like this. Time now for the Matt Price moment. And uh, when we lost our great mate and couch colleague uh, just over two years ago, we decided to dedicate a political moment to him every year. And that had to be the moment that would have inspired the best of Matt's columns. I think I have reasonably good people skills. Every mother loves her baby. Every baby is valued. And Mr Rudd should value all babies equally. Good morning. Welcome to another year of Insiders. This week, Federal Parliament will meet in Canberra for the first time in 33 years without John Howard. I was pointing out to Kevin Rudd that he'd in fact stolen Mark Latham's idea. And then suddenly, as he was sitting there looking plaintively at me with his funny little um, over haircut the over the top of his glasses, and I said, you're a naughty boy. And, just, and I sent him to the naughty corner. Andrew Bolt, the guest list for the 2020 summit is starting to take shape. Rudd is, Can we take that's it cool. from this, Andrew? You haven't got your invite yet. It See, might I'm come in here. the deluge of mail for Valentine's this this week. Oh. You know, it might it might still be in the mail. Oh my God! So it's my bosses. Oh, well, let's forget <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> we've come to the big pineapple in Nambour, Queensland. Kevin couldn't be here because he's everywhere else, but we've certainly got him here in spirit. Um, and, and and it took a cartoonist to point it out that the pineapple actually wasn't a bad likeness. The uh, <laughs> The cowlick up top sort of needs breaking down a bit. I'm talking <laughs> pictures this morning with the uh, member for Higgins and soon to be just plain old ordinary citizen Costello. I sense a bit of disappointment in your answers so far. Can we have a guarantee from you that that's the only time you'll deliver that line in the next no, hour? No, but it's true, David. This is the mega oh. thing. Look, if we're into, look, it, we're into, just it, we're into it. Ding, 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 it's ding. on. Yeah, now, you like guys scoff, but I would guarantee that neither of you has actually I'm checked the fact. I'm reading the Sunday Telegraph. I'm reading the Sunday Telegraph. the University of East Bumcrack about, you know, penguins still being alive. At least I study, I study it. It's our Prime Minister's Ute here, let's thrash it! Let's give it back to Kevin in pieces! Kevin, these are goody two-shoes and that's a good thing. The best way to describe Kevin is he's overseas. Well, the killing season delivered again. And all those who for years had imagined an Abbott and Costello leadership team, well now they'll have to settle for an abbot and a bishop. We're taking a whacking in the polls now, and the bottom line is, I think we deserve it. The Prime Minister does seem determined to beat up on himself at the moment. I don't think anyone would say that the government's been performing as badly as the Prime Minister now seems to imply. Where is the Cabinet and where is the caucus? As political weeks go, that one was hard to beat. The country has a new Prime Minister, the first woman in the job. It's been exhilarating. It's been uh, challenging, and yeah, occasionally it has been a bit scary. What's scary about it? Well, interviews like this, Barry. <laughs> How times have changed. Good morning, welcome to Insiders. The morning after the most remarkable election night in Australia's history. 14 million Australians voted and we don't have a result. We're astonished, Barry. We're, uh, we're uh, also very tired, so back to you in the studio. Why do they do that? It's one thing to say you need to be part of the entertainment industry, it's another to look like a clown. If the rules of the game are put on a funny hat, dance the macarena, put on a tutu in order to get coverage, that's what people do. Mine's just a childish observation. I thought it yeah. was quite significant. Listen to Tony Windsor here. I don't and, want to and, listen and, to Tony Windsor. <laughs> <laughs> You'll just have to sit there and listen. You don't have to pick your partner, I think, in this place from now on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I've sort of got eyes for Chris Pine. He's a gift for the cartoonist because of his hat. Yeah. Uh, and his leather briefcase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's toilet paper in it, you know. I looked inside. I suppose we shouldn't be surprised that a bushy carries toilet paper in his briefcase. <laughs> and finally, I feel as if I should get down on one knee and ask this question. But are you going to marry Tim? Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> it's like an electric limbo, Tony. <laughs> Just goes to show there's no such thing as an abbot-proof fence. We can't let this go without... We're very excited to have you here tonight. Get any one of them to say that plainly. She went eight days without a shower. Let's move on now, shall we? <laughs> Back to you, Barry. And I feel as if I've weathered a dozen anniversaries already. Making us all feel very excited about being here.